Hey, welcome back to Engineer's Workshop. My new machine is acting as a camera stand for the moment, so I'm going to have to roll that uh, back to next week because I went ahead and did a final correction on the shims for the table here. If you recall from my last video, we measured eight and a half thousands out over six inches, so I took a nine thousand shim, put it under the way on the top table, thought I'd be done, ended up overshooting on the on the correction. So I went from, you know, nine thousandths out this way to five thousandths out this way. So I had to refigure and um, reshim it, went ahead and took it apart and uh, didn't have any six thousand shim, but I had three. So I put two layers of three under all the cap screws. I won't bore you with um, how I did that. You know, you saw it from the last uh, video, cutting the shim with the paper cutter and uh, deburring it, drilling the hole with uh, really a, a brad point woodworking bit ended up working well. And then just taking the table off and, and re-swapping it again. But I did end up relieving the hold down clamps uh, by 10 thousandths, so I'll show you that. And then once uh, I'll show you the results of the new tram, which is pretty doggone good if I do say so myself. We'll come back and I'll show you all of the accessories that came with the Cincinnati number two tool and cutter grinder. I keep calling the Dumore tool post grinder a tool and cutter grinder, but anyway, I know the difference. So I got the Dumore tool post grinder over there. You got the Cincinnati number two tool and cutter grinder over here. So let's get into the reshimming of these uh, ways. I've got everything back apart and these hold down clamps, once we shimmed under the table way, lifted the table, which lifts the rack, which is now interfering with the underside of uh, these clamps. So all four of the clamps have to come off, two at each end. And what I'm gonna do is take about 10 more thousandths off of this step. It still has quite a bit of meat. I'm just going to put them up in the um, K and T this way and walk it down the X axis. And then uh, that will give a little bit more clearance for the rack for the next iteration of uh, adjustments. And hopefully it will go back together without any, without any interference. I have two clamps set up in the K and T, uh, touched off this face touched off the rear, and then I moved the table forward 10 thousandths. So just walking the table down here will give me a tiny bit more clearance for the underside of that rack. found a little better source of fine powdered graphite.
I sure don't feel like doing this again. So we've got it zeroed. We'll test just the bed first. Well, we've got about a half a thousandth in six inches. Let's see if it comes back to zero. And it does. Now we'll test with the auxiliary table in place. Half to one, I would say. Well, I'm definitely going to call that a win. You know, I was hoping to get it within a thousandths or two, and I think we got it well within probably one. Hot dang. Miller time, right? We're kind of moving from left to right. I've got a pair of centers. Uh, right center has a rack and pinion adjustment, which was locked up until I figured out how to get that going. There are two, I think these are scalloped uh, quill clamps that will lock the, uh, you know, these, these uh, center pieces in place. The, I don't have the hold down screws for these. I suspect, and if these are what I think they are, there's a good trick to getting these out, which I can show you later, um, because there's no way to grab them, but um, this one's pretty well frozen in place. In between them, I have a mystery block. This thing's about, I don't know, four inches long. It's got a, maybe a surface that's two inches wide. Let me move the work head so you can see it a little bit better. And it sits an inch and five eighths tall, but it's painted all over. There's no mounting holes, nothing uh, that it looks like that it does other than clamps into the T-slot very accurately. <laughs> so if, I, if anybody can help me out figuring out what that thing is for, that'd be great because I can't find it in the catalog of the, you know, all the cool accessories that you can have for a, a number two tool and cutter grinder. That's not in there and I'd much rather have something else. So uh, moving down a little bit further, I've got two additional centers, which are canted very far back. These, this one has a spring retracting uh, center here to quickly mount and dismount pieces. Then uh, I have a homemade little doohickey with a, mounted on a piece of angle. Now this looks like this might have been uh, something that was purchased or came off of another device. This has got a black oxide finish to it. And I think this is set up for um, grabbing chisels and plane irons. You know, plane irons on this surface and chisels on this one. And then you can, you know, pivot it and adjust it any which way you want. Um, I've used that already. I've, I've, I've sharpened a couple of chisels on this. It really works out well. Then uh, moving on down to the end here. I have a Rockwell Univice, and the Univice has one, two, three degrees of freedom here that are adjustable, clampable, they got verniers, and the head at the end, which has a stud that's very chewed up, can hold lathe, uh, tool cutters, uh, you know, small, small things to touch up the ends of that. So. That'll come in very handy. You gotta replace that, that stud there on the end. But um, that's everything that came with the, uh, with the machine. I purchased, I believe I purchased this four inch wheel guard and I think the six inch wheel guard came with it. Also purchased another uh, mandrel with the correct taper uh, to hold grinding wheels. There is a left hand and a right hand thread on this and this machine actually has, uh, if you look at it, and I spin it around here, 
finally remembered how to rotate this. What I have here is an extension on an extension, which I would like to get uh, taken apart. I haven't uh, gotten these off yet, and I also haven't gotten this extension off the spindle. The other side, uh, I don't have any extensions for. That's the left-hand thread. I'm assuming this is the right-hand thread. Last but not least, I did manage to purchase a work head for it. It has um, 50 taper, and I think this is a brown and sharp on this end. I don't have the base of this, the angle bracket. Uh, I'm gonna make something for this, but it uh, seems to be in pretty decent shape, moves nice and freely, no discernible play. So uh, that's everything that I have for the tool and cutter grinder. So hope you enjoyed it. Well, that's certainly as good a result as I could have hoped for. I am happy if we run this table, you know, at an angle to grind any tapers and we're uh, grinding on the center line of the workpiece, we won't be dropping below and above center because this thing is you know, at some wonky angle. So uh, very, very pleased with that. So we tried a 9,000 shim, it overshot by about 30%. So I, I cut a third out of the shim. I ended up with two layers of 3 thousandths and uh, put it back under that way. And it was good. And relieving the, the hold down clamps for the rack by 10 thousandths solved the binding. So I'd say this uh, machine's good for another 60, 70 years of work. Fantastic. Okay, next week. New machine coming next week. Um, if you want to see a preview of that, go on my Instagram, Engineers Workshop 1964, and you'll see what, uh, what I acquired. But I'll give you a little preview of that and uh, assessment of some initial conditions and we'll just keep going from there, starting to develop a, a grinding department. Not intentionally, but hey, you, you, you get what you uh, come across, right? Okay, thanks again for watching and subscribing Engineers Workshop. Uh, passed a little bit of a milestone last week, hit over 2,000 subscribers. So thank you so much. I remember when I was struggling to get to 100. Uh, I'll take 2,000 any day of the week, but let's make it four, five, 10. Let's keep going, right? So uh, share it with your buddies, hit that like, subscribe if you're not, and uh, we'll keep building our stable of machines here at Engineers Workshop. So until next time, as always, stay safe.